Welcome to Italics, television for the Italian-American experience. I'm your host, Anthony Thamburri. On this episode of Italics, director Natalia Abruzzo talks about her documentary, The 66%. And the Garibaldi Meucci Museum in Staten Island honors five distinguished members of the Italian-American community. <laughs> Appearance is everything. This old adage holds very profound meaning for many. How one looks affects everything from job salary to crime conviction. Women especially are biased against according to their perceived attractiveness. One example, an estimated 66% of American women are clothing size 14 or more. Yet a mere 1 to 2% of these women are represented in mainstream media. These women have very limited accessibility to fashion the consequences of which run much more than skin deep. Correspondent Lucia Grillo talks with Natalia Abruzzo, director of the documentary short, The 66%. We may not fantasize about being plus size, but right here, right now, we still need to dress ourselves. Natalie, thanks so much for joining us. So what prompted you to make this documentary? What prompted me to make the 66% really came from, um, I read an article on a young girl who was searching for a prom dress uh -huh. and she was having difficulty and she was, or is considered plus size and she was just not finding anything in her size and it was this uh, immense struggle for her and I thought about it and I said, There's, this is crazy, it's 2013 at the mm -hmm. time and there should be more choices. There are more choices that I thought existed, um, that I thought I had access to as a plus size woman. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, it's just, it's crazy to think that this young girl is feeling that she can't find a dress to wear to her special day for her prom. And I, uh, so I made a, a story, I did a feature story um, on another program, um, and uh, it was about prom's plus size dilemma, uh -huh. and it really delved into more along the lines of what's really going on with women's apparel and um, our access to uh, well-made, beautiful clothing mm -hmm. in sizes um, 14 and up. And then that just really kind of started the avalanche for me because because as I dug in and dug in I said you know we really need to be talking about this a lot more than we yeah. are. They had some nice dresses but as you go down towards your size the dresses just get not pretty anymore it gets uglier. You bring up so many things now because I'm thinking you know at 16 you have enough pressure to think about and then you know where there's so much pressure to look beautiful right women are so that's the focus on women and girls and then, you know, and we want to be beautiful. I mean, not just women, human beings want to be accepted and loved and feel good and feel beautiful, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, it should be something, you're right, that, that is accessible. Um, what type of research then did you, what type of research goes into making a documentary like, is it like this? You have a background in um, health and science reporting. Well, I got my um, graduate degree in uh, broadcast journalism <clears throat> with a concentration in health and science mm -hmm. reporting. And so I wanted to take on the angle of what it means uh, to be obese in America because mm -hmm. we're constantly talking about, uh, oh, you know, people are getting larger and larger and everything's unhealthy and, mm -hmm. you know, fat, sugar, salt, you know, all of these things are, you know, fast food, everything is contributing, you know, we're, we're just growing exponentially but there's nothing to tell us like how to other than you know oh you got to go to the gym and mm -hmm. you're eating whatever you're eating is bad there were like all of these really strange messages around that and I wanted to find a way to tie in what it felt like more or less for me to be someone who is considered overweight mm -hmm. and someone who's also a woman who doesn't have access to the clothing that I'd like to have access mm -hmm. to. And so I just kind of started delving into all of that and looking at places like the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention mm -hmm. and what some of those numbers looked like for who the average American woman um, really was. And there's a lot of research out there also, market research in the retail industry, but not surprisingly, not a lot around plus size 
retail. Mm. Um, it, there's more and more every year now, mm. but there had been a very serious lull in, in the data that was collected for that. I mean, it almost didn't exist. Mm. Um, but luckily, there were some things that I could pull on when I was um, doing this project so that I could learn about the different you know, age ranges or the percentage of um, women that are buying plus size clothing and how much more of them are buying over you know, straight size mm -hmm. um, women in America, things of that nature. So that's kind of how it all meshed together. Mm -hmm how I dug in. And it's all kind of changing too, like who decides the standards of beauty, right? Marilyn Monroe was a size, I don't know, 12 or something. But then there's also that scene in um, The Devil Wears Prada where she's like, I'm a six or something, and he's like, the six is a new 12 or something but, yeah. like that. I don't know what you expect me to do. There's nothing in this whole closet that'll fit a size six, I can guarantee you. They're all sample sizes, two and four. You know, and he's picking food and off her tray, and right. it comes to nothing. Um, so who is the 66%, who is the American woman? Um, okay, so the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention um, uh, use this, the, the Journal of American uh, Medical Association. Mm -hmm. There's a, a study that um, presents that 66% of American women are considered overweight according to BMI, which uh -huh. is the Body Mass Index, uh -huh. which is the um, World Health Organization's standards across the entire globe of weight and health. Mm -hmm. Although that's an entirely different conversation um, to have because scientists are no longer believing in um, BMI as a good measure of um, health in conjunction with your size and your mm -hmm. shape because so many studies over the last uh, few decades have shown that BMI does not really measure your true health. Oh, wow. However, because that is still the standard in um, public health policy mm -hmm. that is used, so the CDC uses it. So if you have a BMI of 25 or higher, you're considered overweight. Um, and then you have obese and then morbidly obese and, and so on and so yeah. forth. But I wanted to take that number, the 66%, and talk about American women who are on average about 5'4", five, 5'4", mm -hmm. five um, and who, uh, according to their hip measurement and their waist measurements, would be wearing what is known as a size 14. Uh -huh. And in the fashion industry, size 14 is a plus size. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of layers to that also because the fashion industry is very interesting in terms of how it classifies plus size. As you brought up, the Devil Wears Prada. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing about for a model, if you're a straight size model, straight size is zero to six. Retailers deem plus size at 12, 14, 16, or 18. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of variance in that. Nothing mm -hmm. that's set in stone, mm -hmm. but you know, when we're talking about big box retail, um, you know, like your Gaps or your Banana Republics or Old Navies or something like that, big mm -hmm. box retailers that do carry sizes 14, 16, 18, 20. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the norm of what people think of what is plus size, uh -huh. because there are definitely some designers that design up to a size 12 but refuse to go any higher than that. And now are these the high-end designers? Some of them are high-end designers and then some of them are also um, retailers such as like a Lululemon, for instance, uh -huh. who won't go any higher than a size 12. Lululemon's and a whole other episode. It is, but, that's <laughs> but it's athletic yeah. wear and uh -huh. so, you know, it's, it's a very interesting conversation, and I say this all the time, the 66%, mm -hmm. my documentary short, is really a conversation starter mm -hmm. about all of the conversations that fall underneath the umbrella of what this is to be a woman of a certain size in America. Who are some of the people that you are talking to in the documentary? I had mm -hmm. the most amazing time uh, meeting some of the most amazing women. Um, I focus a lot of the, the documentary through the lens of what's called the Full Figured Fashion Week, mm -hmm. which is an annual event, is going on for eight years, and it's really the antithesis to the New York Fashion Week. Uh -huh. It happens every year in June. And the reason that it was brought about was because the creator and executive producer of Full Figured Fashion Week, Gwen DeVoe, she 
went to an event at New York Fashion Week and she was really disappointed at what she was seeing and what she wasn't seeing. And she thought, you know, I have enough money to buy anything I see here, mm -hmm. you know, within reason, of course. Right. But there's nothing that I can buy here because you're, there's nothing that's being made in my size. I was pissed off that I went to a very, very popular runway show, sitting in the audience, not a pocket full of money, but access to money, and I couldn't buy any of those clothes. Why? Not because I couldn't afford it, okay? But basically because they didn't come, the size stopped at a point that I couldn't, you know, wasn't attainable to me. And I found that to be ridiculous. Here I am, I could wear this stuff, but I can't purchase it only because you're telling me you won't, you don't and you won't make them in plus sizes. And so she turned that into a whole uh, business for herself mm -hmm. and for lots of other women because mm -hmm. another woman um, who is in the film is Sharon Quinn. Sharon Quinn is a former plus size model with Wilhelmina Models mm -hmm. and um, she's done a lot of uh, really fantastic ad campaigns and she used to model on The View all the time like mm -hmm. when Star Jones would have um, those showing off the clothes. You know how they, they have the, the clothing um, yeah. segments? Mm -hmm. uh, so she was on that a lot but um, and she also did a show with Monique. Monique had a show called uh, Monique's Fat Chance oh. and it was, um, it was about uh, plus size uh, like a plus size pageant. Mm -hmm. And so Sharon Quinn, who is known as the original runway diva, who has this walk on the runway that is like no other. Yeah. And everybody tries to <laughs> everybody tries to learn it, but they just don't have what Sharon has. Wow. Um, but she works in conjunction with um, Gwen DeVoe. She's the casting director for Full Figured Fashion Week. And she also spoke with me. And um, I, I spoke with plus models like Christina Mendez, mm -hmm. who is not represented by a major uh, agency, but she works all the time. And she she's in every publication. Right now she's doing a lot of work with people in Espanol. Mm -hmm. And so she just is constantly working. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, a size 14, 16, and she's not six feet tall. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, Dominican. Most of the women are size 14 and up. So if I want to be relatable, I am a real size model because that's what really well, that's what the real size of a woman is. So she's representing a lot of things. She's representing size, shape, race, uh -huh. which is also another layer. I was going to bring this up because the fashion industry is known, you know, not only to be racially discriminatory, but also ageist. Yes. So there's all there's a lot in here, and then the, the other thing is that it's it's patriarchal norms, right? It's also what what watching the clips of your documentary. It brought up, for me at least, kind of how how the inf how the um, the fashion industry really perpetuates the infantilization of women, yes. the diminution of women, mm -hmm. right, and uh, the physical presence. You have to be like, mm -hmm. right, smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. more young. I mean, mm -hmm. models are so young. Mm -hmm. If you're 18, you're old. Um, I mean, they're babies pretty much, right? Yeah. 14, 15, maybe even younger in the roles of women, lingerie, makeup, and that was evening an, gowns. In, so. in the role of fashion, that was actually an answer to eating disorders mm -hmm. that were popping up and becoming so prevalent that mm -hmm. people were very scared. So instead of having women that were grown women that were starving themselves mm -hmm. or other means that they were doing to destroy their bodies so that they could stay so tiny, they started going younger and younger because then they hadn't gone through puberty yet. It's insane. And also, it is. The, the thing is that, you know, even with, um, you know, like you said, that one of your um, interviewees, she's a grown professional woman oh, who yes. can afford the clothes. Yes. Children are not buying these clothes. Good point. And the aspiration to look to this, especially this infantilization, the diminution of women is... Um, it really has an impact in, in the greater, it's, it's not just limited, mm -hmm. right, to the runway, mm -hmm. because it's, it's widespread. We're seeing this, little girls and boys are, are watching this, men. This is what, we're, was, what is accepted as the norm. Mm -hmm. So your, your documentary brought up a lot of this. I don't know if you want to speak more to that. Those are all super important um, 
pieces of the puzzle as well because the fashion industry has a lot of layers in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And you know, you bring up a good point about the infantilization and the um, aspiration and all of these things, which really do tie back into um, designers and their thought process for including plus size models or even just designing for larger bodies mm -hmm. in general. There are quite a few designers that just outright refuse to do that because they believe that because they're creating some sort of fantasy, mm -hmm. this aspiration of, of luxury lifestyle something or other, whatever that is, they believe that that does not include larger bodies. And so that plays into ageism and sizeism and all of those, those sorts of things. We're taught to be that skinny, <laughs> blonde, <laughs> um, really petite, very toned mm -hmm. uh, woman, no matter what. And we see that with like our aunts or our mothers that are constantly talking about dieting or, um, and which for me as, you know, to to be, um, come from an Italian background. I was background, gonna bring that up. Right? Because right? I'm thinking there's like tables of all this food and then, oh no, but I'm gonna do it, not today. <laughs> or yeah. like, and then no, just one more, but it's terrible. Well, but it's just such good, rich food and we need food to sustain right. ourselves. So it's right. not like when you don't eat, that's not healthy, Yeah, you know? And there's a lot of conversation. Again, see, there's so many layers, mm -hmm. but again, like it's, it's very complicated to talk about how our bodies interact with what society has deemed yeah. norm, mm -hmm. normal, mm -hmm. and what is the actual actuality. Mm -hmm. Because on average, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the average size of a woman is a size 14. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then also on the on the other hand, it's like you know. Um, you know, if you talk about, right, eat, just eat healthy, like you brought up, just eat healthy, just exercise. One, who has time to exercise? We're exhausted, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. America's like, we're, we're running on the hamster wheel. We're always either working, scrambling to make a living, support the kids, all this stuff, right? So who has time or energy to go to the gym? Then, healthy eating, there are neighborhoods where there are only bodegas. Right. Right, so where, I mean, yeah, rice and beans you can, but you can't eat that every day because right. you, you need nutrients, right? right. So it's a, it's, it's a very, very much a double-edged sword. Right. Right, because there are health issues, like we said, on either end with the anorexia, bulimia on one hand. Right. And obesity on the other, the risk of diabetes and all, all other health risks, right? If we're concerned about that, because but the fashion industry is not concerned about anyone's health. Right? <laughs> no, I, you know it doesn't. It doesn't exist for those reasons. Right. And that, I was thinking, like you were talking about luxury lifestyle. I was every time I look at a magazine, I'm like, oh, she's so thin. And then I'm like, damn, if I had that money, I would be eating, eating so much more. Like <laughs> so I'd be like, that restaurant for breakfast, Going out that all one the for time. lunch, that one yeah. for dinner, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's a really interesting way of it's everything is so imbalanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah. in regards to all of that. Yeah. Um, again, you know, opening up the conversation to what is a food desert versus, you know, what are the foods that are okay to eat? Mm -hmm. And then telling ourselves that there are foods that are bad to eat. You, mm -hmm. Even using that terminology that if I eat this, it's bad and I'm bad. Yeah, it's That's a, telling yeah. ourselves that we're somehow um, not good, that mm -hmm. we're somehow doing something wrong, that we're... Um, that we should be ashamed of that, yeah. that all plays into this, you know, overarching dialogue narrative, if yeah. you will, that has been around um, the, the, the word fat and how fat and the term plus size mm -hmm. um, are seemingly two sides of the same coin, but all of the things in which they overlap, you know, th there needs to be more conversation on fat is not bad mm -hmm. you know and plus size doesn't necessarily mean bad you know so it's kind of like this whole conversation about marrying the two and really discussing 
you know, how we see ourselves and who's allowed to be seen and loved and who's allowed to have um, access to mm -hmm. anything in this life. I mean, you know, people want to say that fashion is so shallow or beauty and fashion is shallow, but I think that because the conversation is so much deeper than that and so much richer than that, that it's not really about the clothes that we have on mm -hmm. our bodies. Although we do need to dress ourselves. I mean, we have to get up every day and get dressed. In the fashion industry, the, the images of women are not seen as women who have aspirations, thoughts, and dreams. Often they're draped like dead bodies, right? Absolutely. There's definitely objectification in the plus industry as well because mm -hmm. there's this whole faction of, uh, of plus modeling that revolves around glamour and uh -huh. boudoir and lingerie. Uh -huh. yeah, right. And it's the, the conversation also exists around who's being objectified why are you allowing yourself to be objectified? Mm -hmm. Is is that the only way that you can model? Right. Certainly, it is. And isn't. that too, like we want to, right, we want to be sexy. We live in a, we live in a highly sexually repressed society, um, and then that's a way of becoming empowering. Which I hate this term because why do we want to be empowered in a in a in a society? that keeps making us beg. We are so conditioned as a society to chastise, to shame, mm -hmm. to belittle, to diminish, to right. dismiss bodies that are not deemed beautiful. And those bodies that are deemed beautiful are skinny. Mm -hmm. And skinny translates to, you know, whatever, a size zero or a double zero now, but a, a size zero to a size six, eight. You know, when you start getting into the double digits, people start, you know, noticing, oh, you have some curves on you, mm -hmm. um, or, or you're getting a little, th and they, they say, say it. It. oh, you're getting a little thick, or, yeah. you know, you might want to go to the gym, or you might mm -hmm. want to stop eating so many, you know, cookies, mm -hmm. or, or what right. have you. And to me, that's not even the conversation, because our bodies will be what our bodies will be, genetically speaking, mm -hmm. and a ton of environmental um, factors that happen while we're in the womb that have nothing to do with whether we're going to McDonald's or not. Uh -huh. So, yeah. What would you like people to get from this documentary? I think that my main purpose of this project is to really start the conversation. Now, there are lots of conversations happening around plus models mm -hmm. and around bloggers that are out there that are being covered in um, all kinds of like online uh, news publications from Re Refinery29 to Bustle to Mike. People are out there and they're saying, we're here, we're fierce, we, we deserve to be seen too, and we will be seen. Okay. And so they're blogging about what they're wearing, they're driving consumers to these uh, companies and they're, they're paying for these clothes. And that's great because that's also the conversation. Mm -hmm. Remember I said there's layers. Right. But mainly what I hope that people will understand is it's so much more to women than what we look like on the outside. And that we, we deserve the plus size women women of different body sizes, shapes, and colors deserve to be seen and exist here right now in this world with everybody else. Where can people find out more? They can go to our website, the 66%. Which is the word com. spelled out. Yes. Okay. We're also on Instagram, which is the word spelled out. We're also on Twitter, which is the numbers, the 66%. Percent, okay. and then we're also on Facebook, and so folks can follow us and what we're doing and what we're up to, and um, we're we're aiming for some uh, film festivals so that there'll be some screenings. So right. stay tuned for that and Great. come out and see it. Great. Thanks so much, Natalie, for joining us. Thank you, Lucia. <laughs>
constant um, aptitude, the capacity to travel and to go uh, beyond the, the borders. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Italics. I'm Anthony Tamburri. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata. <laughs>